Personally, I feel like being unique is almost more important than being good nowadays. When you talk about how saturated the market is and how there's brand new artists and songs, thousands and thousands and thousands weekly. And there's just so much music out there and people can make music in their dorm room and upload it and it can exist. So, you know, there's just so much out there and personally, if, if, you, have, if you sound unique, if the music's good enough, you can become irreplaceable, you know? You have a place. I feel like this, this could be that, you know? I definitely stand by it and feel like it, it truly is unique and it's, it's, it's me. Feel like I'm living it twice, all the shit in my mind on my way back to you. 20 in the tank in a pocket full of change But I made that shit last with you Before life got crazy Laying up in your bed We was waking up with no cares It feels like maybe How would I describe the last few years of my life? Um, it's just been an adventure And it's, it's shown me that's what I want I feel alive, like a lot more alive than I was in the past, which is a really good feeling. I can't really put a time, like put my finger on a time when it changed exactly. It was just a gradual change into like being grateful and happy and not taking for granted like the shit that's going my way, you know? We definitely have a super random, very crazy story and I think that's pretty dope that we get to do that, you know? There was something so easy going about the whole thing that eased into it. I wasn't being hypercritical of myself. I didn't even fucking care or know. Yeah, yeah, like I yeah. Didn't, I wasn't like, this isn't professionally mixed. This isn't on a good mic. I should, oh, you know God, what I mean? Or, no. or like, what are people going to think about this? For whatever reason, I never had that. If you saw it and you liked it, you liked it. And then there are people like, fuck this guy. You know, yeah. Mike Stud, white rapper from Duke talking about fucking bitches and playing baseball and sports references. But look. When I look back at it, it's the same reason people like me now. I think the music's gotten better. I think I've evolved. But I was being myself. Yeah. 100%. Yes. Through and through. Like, what else was I going to rap about? It's just that's what on. happens when you're independent, though. Like, Dude, I'm I hear piecing you, it together myself. All, All of us are managing running, it. Running around. It's like, every single other artist, yeah. if you, you're playing at the level and you sell Irving Plaza, they're sitting in the hotel all day. Yeah. Wake yeah, up, room service, go to the venue, do a light yeah. sound check if they right. want to. And sit on their ass all day yeah, until wait. the show. We're fucking. I'm fucking. Going over set set list, fucking driving to Jersey, <laughs> stuck in the Lincoln Tunnel, Changing fucking, the fucking eating uh, hot dogs out of a fucking vendor. Five hours before uh, sold out show tonight in New York no, City. This is lunch. Even in the very beginning, it'd be like 50 people, but they'd be going fucking nuts. Yeah. They'd be going absolutely ape shit. We'd be like, we'd, we'd be like just, small college we'd be like looking years. around, like laughing, like what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And then when it even got, it got pretty big, pretty fast touring wise. It was never a hip hop crowd. It never felt like, like a country crowd, a hip hop crowd. It was just this like smorgasbord of like jocks and cheerleaders. Every, like the tone of it felt like a country tailgate in the sense of like everyone's trying to get wasted and like. Yes. Yes. Score the hot bitches in the section in front of them and like go to the bar after and drink till failure. I treated it like a campaign, bro. Like going and playing a hundred person shows everywhere. I played five. We'd fucking be in Montana for four days and play four cities in Montana. I've never even stepped foot there. And all of them were hundred person shows. When we left that town, I really felt like like almost like a campaign, like, yo, a bunch, we won a bunch of people over. Everyone was talking about it the next, you know what I mean? These small towns, Des Moines, Iowa fucking set the place on fire, you know? But it was who we were. I was a ratchet motherfucker. We were wild motherfuckers. All yes. we wanted to do was drink and be around girls and <laughs> be around fun people, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, 100%. That's all we were doing, bro. Like, I never, I never thought I was gonna be a musician ever. Yeah. So when it happened, then I was yeah. just like, yo, this is fucking insane. Three balls, two strikes. Mike Stud was uh, an ex All American baseball player who, who thought that was really important. 
I was definitely like a nice person. You would agree, I think. Everyone, everyone we met, I was nice, you know, but I, I definitely had a lot of misguided beliefs and misguided outlook overall on shit. But Mike, Mike Studd was, was like, he was kind of a rock star. What am I supposed to say? Just let him know, Mike. Too fucked up to be out in public. Too fucked up to be out in public. When mama don't know one word. And I'm across that bridge while it's burning. Yeah. We basically ransacked every city in America. I filmed it. I put it on the internet. And that's Touring's Boring in a Nutshell. Mike just released his second <laughs> studio album named Closer, and it hit number one on iTunes Closer. in a day and currently sits at number one on Billboard. <laughs> <laughs> like that athletic, yeah. yeah. I like it. Oh, I, some, you owe us a kiss? You owe us a dick. You owe what? What do you owe him? Dick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he owes us. He, he owes yeah. us dick tonight. <laughs> As ridiculous as those tour videos were, it was actually like a pretty good way for us to connect with our fans and give them like an inside look at the type of people we are. Just a bunch of big dumb idiots looking for a good time. <laughs> yeah. Torg's Boring eventually turned into a TV show called This Is Mike Stud. Uh, back in 2016, a film crew followed us for two months on the Back To You tour. And uh, the show later came out that year in the in the summer. Uh, it aired on four networks. How you doing? You good? My name's Kendra. I met Mike last year in Tampa. I've literally been clean since the day I met him. Ever since I met him last year, I've been self-harm clean. That was it. I met him and he told me that I was worth so much more than that and that he, you know, he loves me and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. It was a fun experience, man. It was uh I think you can still rent it on iTunes and Amazon if you want to check it out. I highly recommend it. 10 out of 10. Just a great solid show. I think most people just think about it and they think of the partying, but like, I've always had a seriousness. I've always had an inspiring undertone. If you go back and look at the catalog, it's almost 50, almost more songs about that type of shit. I'm staring at my MacBook. I got them digital dreams, cause we all want material. So that was always there and in me. I just, I just kind of became more connected with that side of things versus like the ego like it's not like we're like we've really changed anything it's just kind of an evolution into like you lose the stud and this music it just so happened that i came i became a new artist in the sense of the way i approach music when he released his first song it was a joke mike stud the great name answer. was a joke like he said it to me i don't know we've been doing this over 10 years, nine or eight years ago, he said to me that he would have, if he had known that he was gonna be a rapper or a musician, he would have never called himself Mike Stutt. Mike Stutt! Mike Stutt! Mike Stutt! It was definitely something that could have happened a lot sooner, but I'm just happy we waited because it feels right now, you know? Mike Stud and then Mike Stud in LA, like that was all necessary parts of it. And Stevenson Ranch was was really turned into kind of a legendary spot because we call it Stevenson Ranch because people would go there and act, that's where you can go and be free and act like animals. You ready? Our house was really unpredictable, you know? Uh, one day I was up on our deck trying to chug a beer with a leaf blower. Hey, I'm John Kilmer. I'm gonna chug a beer with a leaf blower. <laughs> and the next day, I'm producing an interview with Larry King. So. <laughs> it's howdy duty time. It's time for fun and rhyme. Bob Smith and howdy do <laughs> say howdy do to you. There you go. And then, Getting of course, serenaded by Larry King. I mean, if you told me, yo, like, dude from One Direction is gonna be chugging beers out of your beer, the beer bong device you made, uh, or you know, playing fifty thousand dollar beer pong games with posts, and the cops come up and they watch. He's got it. He's a closer. 
He's a closer. Watch Put your, your bucket in, Mike. The money's one thing, but it's me going five and one. Put it in. And it's coming back. The craziest shit happens in LA, and that's why people go. You pay a premium because things can happen that they wouldn't happen anywhere else, and you know. And that's, that definitely was the case for us. So I love that we were there, and I think we had an amazing time. But Stevenson Ranch was definitely, the last few years in L.A., we'd get after it. So I'm rolling like Rolling deep, I'm never rolling like Yeah Bitch, I'm rolling like I'm Fred Durst No, then my head hurts Take an apple head hurt There's something no bad first A big part of this whole switching sound was, was freestyling and being just on a vibe versus like treating it like homework. And I used to treat music like an assignment, you know, back in the day, I would like sit there and write and wouldn't really party. But man, I, re I really learned about the wave and like how, how to translate it to the music a lot more, in my opinion, you know? Towards the end of the night, it was always open up and I'd just get you on know, and just like be freestyling. And a lot of the shit I don't even remember, but a lot of them turned into these songs. Let's see what I said, because I don't remember. So much. Nah, it was fire. You said one line that was hilarious. You didn't call her Fred, I think. Yeah, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> Everything made sense up for that line, but it's... Oh, man, just having a good time. Just you're fucking partying, you're having a good time, you feel great. When you feel good, good things come to you. And all of a sudden you're in the studio at like 5 a.m. And everyone's just more creative, you know? Mike's just on a fucking tidal wave. He feels great and it just flows. All right, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. This will be funny. Let's all do, let's do the group vocals for this. And we all on tech. Yeah, we all on ten. Yeah, all my friends rolling, rolling, rolling up again. You guys are such pussies. You're I crushing it back there. You know, you got a good little tone back there. Yeah, yeah, I'm geeking, I'm geeking. You got a great That's tone back there. Time, bro. Yeah, you got an awesome tone. Yeah, yeah. We all so, on ten. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. Let's do one more. Just be a little louder. Dude, Sachi, honestly, join I can't in. Even talk. Hey, and we, we all on ten. ten. Me and all my friends, it up. me and all my friends, rolling, rolling, rolling up again, yeah. I'll just do the rolling part. <laughs> we'll do one more, then we're done. <laughs> Guys, go on to get covered. Earthquake 20. You hate to see it? I got what are you making over here, Foley? A little, uh, little, little mixer. What time is it? Yeah. It's 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Hawaii and first time, I'm like, let's bring the studio, you know? Let's go out there and make music. You know, I was just getting like lucrative, you know, where I had money to spend and do some shit like that. So we went out to Hawaii open-ended. Literally made like 20 songs in like 20 days. It was very, very eye-opening. I set up the studio, I'm looking out fucking the ocean and we're in Hawaii and I, I felt, I felt it all. And then I felt it channel into the music. I was just on a wave, we were making so many fun. And this was really what, like, this is the birth of the mic sound was in Hawaii. I got a hotel suite, you can slide on through. Hard days, soft sheets, you can climb on to. We I was having relationship issues. I mean, we were in and out of fighting all the time the last few, like, few years of it, really. I think I needed to, like, go through that and be like, 
what the fuck was that? And that's, that, that was really why I went down this path of like getting some answers about myself. We went out to Joshua Tree with the sole intentions of uh, just getting blasted. See you later, Steve. Just going off, seeing where it takes us. So we, we took some LSD, we took mushrooms, you know, basically all day. I'm not even that high, just look at this shit is wild. I changed my mind, I want to smoke. It's like hanging out with fucking Steve from Mount Goose, most wanted up here. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna leave it, bitch. <laughs> Guys, no littering. We're on a school trip. <laughs> so we all went on a hike, and like, it hit everyone while we were at the top of the mountain. Like, sun was setting perfectly. We're all fucking tripping out. John, what's going on down there? <laughs> My legs are starting to wear off. <laughs> <laughs> His legs are starting to wear off. His legs aren't going to work. <laughs> I know, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst hike I've ever seen. I could, I could point to that night as a monumental night for me. I, re I listened to Casey Musgraves all day. And then I listened to Rufus Tussauds all night. You know, I remember on day two, I wanted to, I was listening to Casey again, and I was just like, I want to sound like this shit, like the way this makes me feel. You know, I, I'm I, at this point eating a bunch of mushrooms and just like, I started hearing music different. Like I started caring about just the way it made me feel. Like that was the teller instead of like anything else, which wasn't necessarily how I viewed it before. Obviously coming from a hip hop or urban pocket bounce and flows and cadences, but like merging that with like the energy of the Casey shit and like how it made you feel. And then really I just started thinking about country in general and this, this new vibe where it's just like, it's, it's easy listening and I wanted all that and I, I wanted to create something, but it all clicked there, which is really fucking dope. Cause I had like a calling to go out there and I'm pretty sure that was why. in LA for seven years for the majority of the career um, and we kind of just picked up and dipped. COVID was going on um, but even before that we were having these conversations about maybe not not making this home because we just didn't feel like home for us so we left and it's, it's been the it's really been the most evolutionary period of, of my life and I think of our our career my art um, just my overall canvas of fucking life. Like, I feel like I've made so many new life experiences. And that's what the songs are. It's picking up and leaving and keep, keep going. Got 200 on a dash, I ain't even got a plan. Like, shit's over, but it ain't even began. I just know that where I'm going isn't here. I just know. The place that made me come back and say, remember I pulled you out on the... Fucking, I, we talked outside in the front steps, Stevenson Ranch, and I was like, do you wanna just leave? Remember I had that conversation with you? Yeah, that was right when I got back from being in Utah for a while, you know? And I was just like, yo, the vibe here, crazy, you know? It was just really refreshing feeling. Um, and, you know, being around Post is one thing, but I, a lot of the time we weren't, you know, like we had our own spot, we were kind of an hour away, so a lot of times we weren't, but just, the, feeling and being around new people and just being in that vibe was, was eye-opening. And it was kind of like, okay, I, I stayed there for, you know, 40 days or 50 days or something like that. So by day 30, I'm like, yeah, this isn't a fluke. Like, I feel better every day when I wake up here. I love, it feels fresh. And I was just like, we gotta get the fuck out of LA. And that was, that was really it. Days go by, 
These days all I'm trying to know is who I am Don't know why it's been hard for me to stay in one place Yeah, days go by, I've been trying to run away from what I know I don't know where I'm going, but I do know why Got a backwoods road full of big old smoke Got a house full of friends, gotta keep them close Got big old eyes for the things I want And a voice in my head telling me I don't Yeah, yeah, but right now I'm trying to make it to the morning I made my first hike in Scottsdale Shit, bye <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Back with another vlog. Better than ever. Uh, so it's been a while since I've been on this, but there's been a lot of things that have changed. Uh, this is the first time me and Jonathan are going back to the supermercado since leaving LA. So it's a real special moment. And doggo like guys now. We're getting settled, trying to figure it out. It's a shit show, but we're here. Michael's up there. Since LA, we went to Scottsdale. I mean, I made some friends there that I think will be lifelong friends. And I was there for two and a half months. The night with Riggs. Yeah, Riggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You took a bunch of money off him. He texts me at like 4 a.m. He's like, he sent me a thing. He goes, uh, I'm up 500. And then I got a text at like 930. He goes, just walked into my place. Things escalated. And he has his Venmo and it says minus 1500. Like, oh. I think we were able to start a podcast because uh, it was right around COVID and everyone was quarantined. Musicians couldn't go on tour for over a year. So I think with that downtime, we kind of used that as an opportunity to start a podcast. And uh, that's how YNK Podcast was born. We had, we had some sick guests on there too. Right. I'm still to this day feel like I haven't earned shit. Like yeah. Whenever I'd watch specials, I'd be like, why don't they use dope music? Mm -hmm. Like music and the narrative is everything, mm -hmm. man. Perfect example is NFC Championship game this year. Like we're in New Orleans. It's the loudest place you've ever been in your life. For me to be at my best, the stakes have to be the highest. I have to have that nervous energy. Looking back on it now, I would say I absolutely 100% lost their respect. Mm. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the guests come on and they, they open up more, you know, like it is one of those things where it's just like, I think I build a lot of friendships through that too. I think the music benefited the most from, from the, him leaving yeah, LA and yeah. spending time in different places. Like the vibe that he was able to tap into mm -hmm. in each different city. It was a good place after LA because it's kind of similar, but it's just better. And Johnny was in the house. Johnny was living with us, yeah. We're trying to play a game. Beautiful memories though. I know that fucking bothers you because you're such a camaraderie guy. No, I, I even remember when it happened, almost being so arrogant and fucking egotistical, such a fucking asshole that I uh, I was like, why am I not a team captain? These guys are going up here. I'm so selfish and stuck in my shitty ways that... that? Uh, Hello. Howdy. What's up? Should we go to Delilah? <laughs> I'm sure. confused. Hey, Mrs. D. Hello. Are we talking in here? How are you? Hi, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mr. Steve. <gasps> Hi, puppy. Don't shoot. Oh my God. Are you, guys, are you with guys? Are you with guys? Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, they almost mm. just got shot. Yay. I've been doing way too well to sit around and wonder how, how it could have went different. Yeah. I've been waiting all my life to live the one I'm living now. I'm the one that gotta live it, so I went missing. We went to Montana from there. Scottsdale was crazy, we partied a lot. Really fun spot, so. 
I mean, we wanted to kind of get away and go go do something we haven't done before. And we went and lived in on a hundred acre ranch in uh, Montana, literally massive property, and it was beautiful. It was like picture book shit. That's our final week on the ranch. Easily the most magical spot we've ever been. And this is yearly. Hey, buddy. Hi. Now we're up at headquarters, guys. It's obviously the front door of the crib right here. And then you just walk out to this. We did a polar plunge one day. Never out. I mean, I. Had a studio looking out just like this, just like mountains and trees and fucking elk and. Solitude and just like communion with nature and just communion with like, it felt like the most basic form of like life and like what it really is. <laughs> I was very inspired to make music. I was working every day there. Um, and it was just, yeah, it just showed me a whole other, a whole other side of life that I really liked, I, I hadn't really experienced. So much peace there. And it was, uh, I mean, a lot, ton, like really, really, really self-care, like was eating clean, I was meditating, I didn't barely drink, no one over. You know, it was just like a lot of alone time. It was really fucking good. You're just reaching for the fucking sky. Reach. Now every breath you take, just feel feel your rib cage expanding. That's all right. We ain't going. Hi, Stevie. What are we working on here? It's a little idea, Steve. Steve. It's a little idea. I could play a little sample out here in the streets. Days go by, these days all I'm trying to know is who I am. Don't know why this may hard for me to stay. This is all like painting against the wall shit. Yeah. A lot of that, that was already kind of You just keep recording arranged. a bunch of shit, yeah. But then like I just kept opening it on another day and I was doing this one. That would be a dope addition to that other song. Like a bridge or something. Yeah, yeah. like just yeah. like a part, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But now... Over a span of days, like I pick my favorite parts, put them together. A lot of times, I'm saying shit that works together. To my point about ideas, not being—I was just thinking about this. Not being, like when I reference, like, are the, these are these really my ideas? You know when I say that? Like I think a lot of people don't get what I mean. It's like coming here, I notice an unbelievable difference of how I feel creatively, and you know. Even even saying picked up this this backwards and smoked it and it played a part in that creativity. Don't I owe? Isn't the idea like all? It's all circumstantial. Like so, where you put yourself is like positioning yourself for an idea to like for ideas to come to you. Mm -hmm. So technically, the weed gets some of the weed should have some credit in the idea. The fucking view I'm looking at should have credit for the idea too. You'd be a legend if you actually broke off five percent on the master to weed. <laughs> broke it off the backwoods. <laughs> Whatever. Went to just cannabis. Whatever strain it is. For real though. Just one. I don't even know if we get any more. Woke up looking at the blue water. Your car in the driveway. I say, got attention. Do what I say on time. On time is what the time say. Yeah. Cause all I wanna do. Yeah. From there, we went to Tampa, lived in Marcus Stroman's house. He's my best friend from Duke, um, an amazing athlete, obviously. You ready? These days, you ready? Girls these days. But amazing friendship we have. I mean, he literally just like let us live in his house. Marcus, what do you think about the new songs? John, you gotta hear these. <laughs> I really think there's three songs in here at least. Just one take, John, one take. <laughs> Bro, this is like, this is just one of the, man, I think we have like five records on one take. Really do. It's not, not two. <laughs> 
She rock, not she three. Roll. Not four and a half, one take. She rock, <laughs> that's cool, she rock. She in one direction, dog. I'm on a different lane. I get one direction, dog. It's going up for sure. <laughs> I got all in the pop, money offshore. Started on the ground floor. <laughs> Boy, you know the rifle. This house is the backyard. I mean, I had this view, but it was the fucking water. I saw more dolphins than people most weeks. You know what I mean? So it was really fucking another, really, uh, just a different version of that same experience. Everywhere we've gone, it's given me like really good vibes and it's made me feel like I'm growing and doing cool shit and just enjoying myself a lot more. And it's been channeled through the music, I think. Um, Tampa was amazing, yeah. Spent, we kind of lived like we were retired slightly. I was working, but you know, half the time I'm just out there on the dock just like reading and like, you know, fucking looking for whales and dolphins and on the jet ski, watching sunsets. I mean, bro, it was really, so really a fucking beautiful vibe. Private neighborhood is really nice. You ready? I don't do this, but I do tonight. I do. Okay. Eat that pussy like it's food tonight. Yeah. They don't love me, but it's cool tonight. I like to keep it loose, but keep the moves tight. You was right. Running numbers up, I'm shooting dice. Fuck a suit and tie, I'm loose and goosey, but the moves are tight. Louis slippers never slipping, I just like to slide. I was on your side till you group me with these other guys. Great balance. See the balance shot? It's a balance clinic right now. <laughs> See the balance of the beat? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm working on my leg punch with the beat. That's a beat crushing. I was killing it. <laughs> I made two slaps. <laughs> one beat to one beat in the same night. And yeah. fuck us up. The seagulls are ch chiming in. <laughs> seagulls been listening all night. He said, <laughs> you have. You did do that. <laughs> it's that same beat. I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, dog. Yeah, I met her at the ball game. We was going up. I was watching one of my dogs play. She just showed up. You know that's just what it was. Hey, hey, yeah, we gotta fix that up. It's probably his favorite game ball. You may have thrown off the dog. I got another. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the motherfucking championship of the Bolina Cup. So when Mike sucks down his brewski, he uses the revolutionary beer chugging device, the Chug Bud. He's like, as hitters, we want to be the pitcher to be perfect dance partners. 26 times I've been trusted to chug an entire bottle of Ciroc, and I did not finish it. Business is a big part of my life and who I am, bro. Like, that shit gets me, gets me out of bed too, you know? Just as much as anything else, like, I wouldn't want to just do the music, like, I, or just the podcast. I like that kind of shit, and it's, it's important, but I think people come and see, every crib we're at, people, I could see it in their eyes, just like, damn, I didn't know you were getting it like that, you know? They, they know most people just like, oh, Mike Studd, yeah, singer, like, never, he's not on TV and on the radio all the time, so he's not rich, you know? We did it way different. We played the long game, and then, you know, we got lucrative. So in the music we have touring, and then the premium, and then the streaming. Um, then there's, you know, our merch businesses do really well. We have the Mike merch, which Keep Going falls under. Stevenson Ranch, its own brand, is doing really well, and I think that one has the most legs. Um, we're doing some clothing shit. We were doing some clothing shit for some other athletes, like some of my homies doing collaborations. Uh, the Chug Bud is a huge business. This is called the Chug Bud. Basically what it is is a combination of a beer bong and a shotgun. All you gotta do is open your beer, put the chug bud on the top, use the key that comes on the chug bud to poke a hole in the can for airflow, and then down the hatch. 
going to lean into that a lot more too in, in regards to partnerships and tapping my homies and shit and doing, doing collabs with them. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, we have the Bellina cup, which I love. Basically, when COVID happened, I had this shower idea that's like, yo, why don't I tap all my celebrity homies? We'll do a beer pong tournament like March Madness. The Nelk Boys versus Machine Gun Kelly entering in to the famous song Kill Shot which was Eminem's diss track of Machine Gun Kelly. Kelsey and Danny Amendola were, let's be honest, pretty fucked up for this game. I haven't been practicing beer pong lately. I've been singing and dancing a lot lately, so. Essentially, like, everyone donates. You pay to get in, and we donate it to charity after. It's not for, like, the love and affection on it. It's for, like, I like the wins. I, li I like coming up with good ideas and advancing, you know? Advancing them and executing them. And I'm just proud of the, I mean, we put a lot together for a small group of idiots because we can be fucking idiots. Hey, Mike, how are you? Uh, just real quick questions before your match today. Uh, now, we, we heard that you chose not to partake in any uh, sexual activity and hopes to limit distractions and keep her testosterone high uh, for this match. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, um, you know, had a powwow with some of my trainers going into the tournament. Um, they said it'd be best to lay off the sex, and uh, I've done so. Uh, Quarantine is... <laughs> We were 100% right uh, as far as choosing Nashville to finish the album. Just like, it's Music City, the, the, there's music in the air here. And it's, I've made some songs here that are like a handful of songs that were made here, or made the album. They're really, I don't know if there's a flyer spot in Nashville, like as far as just the location and... Right here, this is Broadway. It's like the most popular spot in Nashville right here. And we're, we're right on the river on the other side of the house, but it's just right in the thick of it, the best, the best part of the city in my opinion. Um, but it's fucking soundproofed, like perfect spot to finish an album because I was able to really work here. If the whole place wasn't soundproof, I don't know if we would have been able to do it. So great spot, super happy with the decision to, to uh, come here to finish it for sure. Tell you one thing, this is the most dangerous spot I think I ever lived. Just as far as like temptations, the partying, the turn up, it's dangerous out here. <laughs> Music feels like me to a fucking T, where I've never truly felt that way exactly, you know? I always was trying and, chan and channeling and probably did well some songs, you know, better than others, but this music is like exactly who I am and like, that's exactly what happened. We are a really unique group of dudes, man. And I think this music fits that. It's, it, it doesn't, can't put it, can't put it in a genre. I don't think you can compare it, you know, to, to any other artist. I want to hear shit that makes me feel good. I want to hear shit that's catchy to the ear, not too much. 
not too aggressive, not too late. It's just in the in that whole that whole vibe that I'm in as a person, you know. That's the feel good music, you know. That's all the great moments of these past few years that I was able to put into a song. The shit you want to be on the boat to, the shit you want to be playing beer pong outside, driving around, driving to the beach, driving home. That music, lifestyle music for the highs, for when when the sun's out. Just like drill mix in the number, not the one that says four mastering. Yep, got it. Yep. So I have them already. They're in that link. Amazing. I'm gonna. I'll just text you those so you can put them in that same link, and we'll just. It'll have. It'll be easy for Foley. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, big guy. No problem at all. I think I need to do something. Okay. <laughs> We did it. We did it. We did it. A hundred percent. Man, thank you so much, bro. It wouldn't have been possible without you, obviously. So thank you so much. There's a lot of good stuff ahead of us, you know, for sure. It's a good feeling to have. You know, anything could happen, and I don't know. I'm not really even worried about the results. I just know people are gonna like it. And, I know our shit will go up, and if it's supposed to go big up, then something will happen. If not, we'll continue to just grow and enjoy it, you know? Yeah, I do it again.